What is up heroes, it's Midnight Zero and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party. In the last episode we failed yet again. We tried to get a better ending, um, we tried to avoid the wrong end when everything went out of control, but alas, we, we ended up with the same thing. So, in this episode we're going to kind of start over. I'd like to give a special shout out to Larvin Sanders, um, who in the previous episode commented saying that he or she had been holding back for a lot of this um, let's play or watch me struggle through these wrong endings um, and was really apologetic about it being a spoiler and such because she knows he she knows i um, not really sure about your gender sorry about that uh, my thoughts on spoilers and everything like that and I really appreciate that sort of refrain um, but I do want to say that this isn't a problem in this case because in the video I had obviously tried a couple different things and I was very clearly looking for some sort of source of direction some sort of help um, at the end of that video and that's why I was okay with it so thank you so much for that I appreciate that and so after a little bit of looking um, and after that sort of comment I believe what this is going to come down to is a combination of Yuka but more importantly um, a decision we made as Yoshiki that I totally forgot about um, and so what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna play through a little bit of this we're gonna see if we can survive with Yuka um, when we have the chance oh boy um, and I think we're I think we're starting off right into that <clears throat> I think we start off right back. I don't even remember the exact beginning of the chapter, but I think we start off in this chase. Yeah, I think we start off with this chase. So we're going to see if we can survive this chase. Um, uh, uh, uh. And yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and survive right now and do what we can, but I think we're gonna try and do things a little bit differently when we are Yoshiki, because I believe if we essentially choose not to go back initially with Ayumi, that's what triggers that wrong ending, at least according to Larvin Sanders. So, this beginning of the episode is gonna be primarily stuff we've already done so far. Hopefully, hopefully, this Yuka chase doesn't turn out the same way, but, um, you know, when we are going through the same things, when, you know, we're seeing the art, we're seeing the dialogue you've already seen before, I, you know, I'm just going to be chatting. I'm just going to be chatting about what's going on in my life. I'm going to be chatting about the games in general, it's just some thoughts and stuff, and it's going to be relatively lax. It's going to be surprisingly chill for a game like Corpse Party. I'm not going to cut out too much of it because I kind of I kind of miss this sometimes. You know, when you have text-heavy games where you're constantly reading, you're constantly voice acting, which I do enjoy, um, you don't get a lot of time to just talk about what's going on. Uh, you stay very game-centric. And that's great for certain games, that's great for certain episodes, but I don't know, I remember back like when I did Pokemon, I, Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green. One of my favorite, or one of my favorite parts about that is that there were so many random battles and just like walking around and there wasn't a lot of text to read, there wasn't a lot to talk about from like a game strategy or anything like that. So there were a lot of times where I was just like, oh, like, you know, I just had this class and like, oh, I'm like really finding this thing cool and like going forward, I think I might try this and like this weekend, it's gonna be pretty fun or like this friend is not really... Um, what's it called? Or like, this friend has this going on, and yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of fun to talk about your life a little bit in that sort of sense, and it also adds a little bit more of like a like a personal touch to my channel, so that's probably what's going to be a bit of this episode, um, and I know it's it's ironic to be talking about something so lighthearted and kind of ignoring what's going on on screen, which is relatively, uh, which is quite the, uh, what's it called? Uh, creepy scenario, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the game plan for this episode. Until we get to somewhere new, until we do something we didn't do before, until we start down a different path, and as long as we're doing stuff that we've already done before, probably just going to uh, what's it called? Do more of the same. <laughs> um, we should probably save here, just because I don't want to have to go through that cutscene again. Worst case scenario. Um, but yeah, so so what is going on in my life, right? Um, I've actually got a big Japanese uh, presentation coming up this weekend. It's pretty cool. We have like a speech contest that's going to be held for a bunch of different schools from the area, a bunch of important people and everything. And so I'm going to be giving part of a presentation um, from my Japanese class. We did this like exchange project or like project um, group activity thing with a uh, with a nearby like Japanese exclusive school, so that um, a lot of people in the area are from Japan, working at a lot of big tech companies and such, and so they bring their whole families with. But with the intention of going back, um, a lot of times they need to be learning the Japanese curriculum, learning what Japanese school life is like and such, and so they have this like weekend school that they go to where they cram an entire week's material in in various subjects. It's it's actually really intense. But um, we did like a project where we did a discussion, like a poster building thing, and we did, got a tour of the place and everything. It was super fun. I actually really enjoyed it. I was just like very casually chatting with some like fifth or sixth graders. Um, 
or I think they were like 13 years old or so. So they were really young, and ironically, that's like about the level that like we were at. We, it was funny because like we could think a lot more in depth and a lot more generally and a lot more um, like college students, right? Uh, as opposed to like fifth or sixth graders, but they could speak a lot more comfortably than we could. Uh, so it was a pretty fun experience, but it was really fun like working as a team to build like posters and everything. And um, it was funny, one of them, at, like while we were having lunch together, brought up Love Live, and then everyone was like, oh my god, oh my god, you need to talk to Nick about Love Live. And uh, so we started chatting about Love Live in Japanese. It was, it was really fun. Um, and yeah, my, my life at the moment does revolve quite a bit around Japanese and YouTube, and in a... Uh, in another regard with Japanese, I've kind of settled on summer plans, which is pretty cool. I'll be uh, I'll be spending my summer in Tokyo for a couple months. I'll be at Sophia University. I don't know if you've heard of the place. I don't really mind or care if you guys know where I'll be this upcoming summer. If you'll be in Japan, if you're going to be in Japan, if you're going to be in Tokyo at any point during this summer, please let me know. It'd be really cool to hang out or something like that. Um, but I'll be taking some language classes, which is really cool. I'm at a point in my Japanese learning career where I'm kind of getting to the peak of, or like the limit of knowledge, just like strict grammar structures and stuff I can learn in a very strict class format where, you know, I'm, I'm at Duke University right now. And the next class I will be taking at uh, Duke, if I were to continue with the Japanese track, isn't really one of the typical go through a textbook, learn more Japanese, practice those sort of grammar structures and everything. It's more of a start watching, start reading things together, discussing them, really just practicing and locking down what you've already learned. Um, so after this summer, I should, after living in Japan for a while, after taking more classes, I should have reached almost all the knowledge I really need to know to be pretty functional, and I should have plenty of practice at integrating that into my natural speech, which is easily the hardest part of learning more advanced Japanese. It's, you learn a lot more situational, a lot more difficult to use, a lot more rarely used Japanese, and so it's difficult to integrate into regular conversation and to practice more frequently. So, um, I'm hoping I can do a lot of that over the summer, and then for when I am in med school, I don't need to bury my head in textbooks to maintain my Japanese. I can just read newspapers, I can watch shows, I can just chat with people nearby at local markets or whatnot. Um, that sort of a thing. So, that's pretty cool. Um, it is, I got into the program and everything. I still need to make the money for it. So that, that is, that would be the only limiting factor at this point really. And what's cool is Lizzie will be there too. Um, she won't be doing the same thing or at the same place, but she'll be in Japan with me for the summer and it'll be, it'll be, it should be a good time. Um, I might be working at a particular company there too, in addition to taking classes to also help with like money and stuff. But um, it's pretty cool. I, I'm gonna try and probably spend as many jump or summers as I can in Japan because, uh, oh my goodness. We're, I think we're almost at the chase scene, so I'm gonna want to be on my toes. Um, oh my. But, yeah, I think I'm gonna try and spend, like, every summer I can in Japan over the next four years while I'm in med school and everything, maybe doing research, maybe shadowing, maybe getting some sort of clinical exposure in hospitals and such, because I do plan on, you know, at least spending some of my medical career in Japan, whether that's for uh, a bunch of different things. Oh, we need, what is it again? Oh, why hello there. I probably should have saved, but we will, um, we'll go around, I think. If I recall correctly, there's some way that we're supposed to get the like front hall key to get out of there, but but yeah, so I do plan on going back to Japan quite a bit, learning quite a bit about the culture there, especially the medical culture and such. Okay, so I think we need to trigger that maybe? Question mark? I'm gonna save real quick because of having to go through that cutscene again. Alright, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking about Japan and my life for a bit so that we can focus on this chase a little bit. Um, We'll save here, because this is, uh, this I think is another branching point that might lead to us getting a potential wrong end if we uh, screw up badly enough, that is. So I think what we've got to do is we've got to go around to the other end, back where Sachiko is, and then come back. Um, so it's a really long chase, if I recall correctly. And speaking of which, I do want to stress again that I have played this game, so I know a lot of like the overall outcomes and such. But what I forgot more so than anything, oh man, I forgot about that crying sound effect. Um, what I forgot about more so than anything is what exactly you need to do to trigger certain endings or particular plot devices to move things forward. 
Uh, that sort of a thing more so than anything else. Now, I think we're getting pretty close. We're gonna wanna head back down to the first floor. I think this is about where we died. I think we went downstairs and then nothing really happened. So we ended up getting caught. Oh man, on is really intense right now. So I think we gotta go, do we go north or south? I, I think we've only, we, we can only go north. Uh, I think it was Momir Anderson brought up a really good point. Who would you rather be stuck in uh, Heavenly Host with? There it is. It's the key to the front entrance. Take it. Yes, we will, we will take it. Okay, so we have the front door key. Um, now we've got to go back. I, I hope you came from where we just entered. Otherwise, it would make it a lot more difficult than it probably needs to be. Um. <laughs> man, but yeah, if you had to be stuck with either Ayumi or Kizami, which would you prefer? And it's like, man, I don't know, because like Ayumi is like at least sane for the most part, and would uh, like Ayumi is sane for the most part, could maybe help out every now and then. You'd have to look out for her, of course, <laughs> but she could also just completely crack and end up screwing everything up, as we saw in that one wrong end. Um, yet at the same time, if she does crack, she's probably one of the few people you could actually handle, like fight off and such. Whereas Kizami, for the most part, while sane, would be really strong, could help fight off ghosts, potentially could get you through certain areas, could, you know, provide some nice, like, physical labor. Yet at the same time, while, what's it called? When insane, would be so much more difficult to escape from, which is, like, the real danger. Okay. So now we can we're gonna save. Just for just to be safe. So I think we so we have the front door key, so now we'll head out. And now this is this is where things are gonna probably be a little bit different from here on out. So uh, so we'll focus on the game a little bit more, that is. <laughs> Let me know if you guys enjoy those little like tidbits about my life too. I mean I like chatting about them and you know certain series will, what's it called? I'm pretty sure we have the key, yeah. The door is now open. Let's head on out. Um, certain series will lend themselves to that sort of chatting more so than others, so... And I'll, I'll let you guys know, like, when those sorts of series are coming out, or... It's typically stuff that doesn't... has a bit more downtime, a little bit less text-heavy, and that sort of thing. Okay, so, I, I don't think we're... So we're still not done. We're still not done. Oh. Sachiko. We know we can't really, uh, trust you. This way, hurry. Okay, well, I guess we don't really have much of a choice, though, to be honest. We gotta, gotta trust pretty much everything we can get. Um, and then from here, where do we go? We, I don't think we go in here, can we? I, I guess not. Huh? Oh, no, Yuka doesn't, Yuka doesn't seem to be doing so hot. And so this is new text, this is new scene. Let's see what's going on. And she just runs. So I'm no longer in control now. <laughs> run, rabbit, run! <laughs> is that like a... Hmm, I feel like that's a reference to some, like, old tale. Not like the, you know, tortoise and the hare, but... Whoa! Yo, Yoshikazu coming out of nowhere! The real MVP! Takes out Kizami, what? Yo! And Sachiko takes him? Oh no. There's, there's nothing. There's no way there's anything good in store for Kizami right now. Now we got Morishige. Is this gonna be the same cutscene? Okay, I think this is gonna be the same cutscene. Where, uh, where we see him look at the phone. A lot of you guys were talking about this game, um, and like, why am I ever thirsty? Yeah, yeah, I think this is the same cutscene. Um, about how a lot of the characters in this game are actually pretty cool. Um, and they require a lot of background and, you know, this, this story is not perfect, right? This game is not perfect. And I think it's always really important to put it back in its context, right? Um, okay, yeah, we do get this cutscene. So I'm going to chat a bit more. Um, so we do get, you know, this is a, this game was made RPG maker 
Um, not to mention RPG Maker back in the 90s. So like, this is a really old school game. Obviously this was revamped and remade and stuff, and the original sprites look really funny in my opinion. Um, but the story is really what draws this game. And the story, again, isn't perfect either. There are only so many plot devices you can use. There are blackouts and such, which do make sense as the darkening and this overarching theme. And the story is really complex, and there are multiple, like, parallel universes in which events are happening. And that can be pretty confusing, too. So it is really cool to kind of go back and really think about what's been happening and how interwoven the story is and how the character relationships are working and everything. And how, overall, most of these characters, given the little screen time they have, given the little bit you know about them from before, everything happened in Heavenly Host, um, are pretty well done. Especially given the means through which this story development is being done. You know, an RPG Maker horror game. So it's not like it's a perfect game, but it is really good in my opinion. Especially for its, uh, for what was used to make it. And I think part of what I really like about it so much is the story. The overall story. Um, you know, who the real killer is, that sort of a twist, how the characters crack, how they deal with the pressure, how they don't deal with the pressure, um, how it affects their relationships, and what you can see under how people react under this sort of a stress. Um, and it is kind of supernatural, and it isn't always entirely predictable. It's maybe one of those mysteries that you can't 100% solve until, you know, information is given that you didn't have all along, which I'm not a huge fan of, but you can at least have doubts, you can have hints, and you can build up some sort of a theory, and that part is really fun in this particular game. I remember the first time I played it, I really enjoyed trying to come up with what was going on, even if I couldn't get to the end result, even if I couldn't solve everything, at least solidifying, reconsolidating what I had already been exposed to, and coming up with particular theories, trying to figure out the universe, even if I couldn't get the problem at the time, was still a really fun process. And I really enjoyed that. And this kind of ties over to Danganronpa as well. Um, given that, you know, Lizzie and I theorize all the time, right? We talk plenty about, you know, what we think is going on with the killer, how things work, how it affects the murder and everything. And... Sometimes, almost all the time, it's fruitless, right? Uh, we There's no way we're going to expect to completely learn everything and understand everything um, until we have all the information necessary. You can make a good guess, but you can't 100% know it until you have all the information, right? And that's something you can accept. And, you know, Lizzie and I won't make that jump. We won't really say, like, oh, I think it's this person until we have, like, a pretty confident guess. But it is fun to look back on what's happening, to try to understand things, to try to understand how those sorts of things might have a relationship to... Uh, what's going on in the murder or how they could play a part in the murder or how they could indicate what characters were involved in the setup to the murder and such. Um, a lot of that is really cool. And... I don't know. That's probably just a huge part of my personality and it's probably one of, you know, a part of Lizzie's as well and that's probably why we're together. Uh, is that we just kind of like that thinking. We don't, we in particular really don't like waiting for answers to come. If you guys saw the, the final dead room from Danganronpa, um... That's like a great example of us, you know, really wanting to try hard. And maybe I'm a bit more driven in that sense. Um, Lizzie said, you know, because of the scary environment and such, she maybe would have given up just a bit earlier. But, but I really like being given sort of like mental challenges, logical, deductive puzzles and such, and really testing my brain with them. Um, even if, as much as I can, at least at a given time. But... Man, where did where did this tangent go? I hope you guys don't mind this episode. Let me. I really want to hear some feedback on this episode from you guys because we haven't really discussed a lot that's new, right? We obviously did a Yuka chase, but this is a different episode. This is a very different episode. Like I said right from the bat, right off the bat, this is going to be a very chill episode. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this. Okay, so now so now we're Satoshi and now me. Let's see if um, let's see. I think this is still something we know about already. I wonder where things are going to change. Probably not much, not too much is going to change until until we go back to Ayumi and Yoshiki potentially. So I think that's what happens after this, maybe. Everything like everything goes crazy, and then uh, what's it called? And then it blacks out, and then it's gonna switch to other characters. Because, of course, that's, you know, how you build drama in a game like Corpse Party. Something big is happening, and then, of course, you have to cut it off. And shout out to my cliffhangers at the end of almost every episode of any series I do. Okay. 
I think we'll switch over pretty soon. Question mark? There we go. Yeah, so here we are. Okay, so here's, here's I think, the really important decision um, we're going to have to make. Also, as a as a quick mention, I part of why I want to do this game is to set up and to see if people would want to be would want to watch the sequel, of course, Hardy Book of Shadows, because um, I'm really excited for that and I wanna I wanna hop in that game. But I also want to have you know a bit of a, a bit of a crowd coming with a bit of people that have enjoyed the story. Maybe it's not the best, but it's something worth looking into. I heard Book of Shadows is really good, um, arguably better than this first one, but there's still quite a bit of content left in this game, so. I hope you guys are. I hope you guys are excited to see it all. I, I keep I keep talking like it's almost over and stuff, but there's still there's still quite a bit to see, you know, in this particular chapter, and then um, in the extra chapters too. So, okay, so now we got Yoshiki, who can never catch a break for Ayumi, never catches a break, and they just or Ayumi just found out about the whole murder and everything, and now we gotta we gotta decide. We have this argument about whether or not we're gonna go back and. Whether or not we're going to, I don't know, pretty much eat Ayumi's crap. Because <laughs> she never gives him a break. But Even though Yoshiki's probably the one who's asking the really important questions. And I like how you guys kind of agree with that. Um, <clears throat> I forget who it was. Someone said that Ayumi was still their favorite character. Oh, yeah. And about character development. Um, Faye Phantom mentioned something really cool about the characters thus far and about character development in general in this game and how Ayumi is still like technically a better character character than someone more likable like Naomi because Ayumi is arguably more of a character than Naomi because Naomi is defined through her relationships with other characters rather than anything that's unique to herself which is a really cool concept um, so thank you so much for kind of introducing that sort of way of thinking into my uh, my perspective of this game. It's so cool that in particular with games with really that really center on story, um, solving a mystery, um, character development and such, depending on who's playing it, it's always a different experience. And depending on who's playing it, it can always be perceived differently. Any sort of you know outcome, any sort of mystery, any sort of thought, you know, can vary based on, you know, who's Aww. playing the game. And that's why I think these sorts of experiences are really cool to share um, with something like YouTube or, or the like. Okay, should probably ground myself before I unknowingly make the uh, same mistake I did last time. Take us back into closed spaces. I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, no, we don't have the choice just yet. Oh, and I want to ask you guys what you think of the art style. I know the characters look kind of bland, but um, I do like this sort of anime style, more or less. Let's go, please, reference. Come on. All right, we'll go back. Admittedly, I don't remember having this option last time. Because I will, I'll, I'll come clean with you guys. The last time we were in this cutscene, I knew that this decision happened, and that this decision was super influential in getting a particular wrong end but i didn't remember actually having this option you know what you know what i bet we didn't have the option because we got caught as yuka i bet if you don't get caught as yuka you actually have this option and you can they still give you the opportunity to screw up don't worry this is still corpse party but if you do get caught by yuka you don't even have the chance to choose because i knew that i i, I remember that you have the opportunity to choose whether or not to go back, but I didn't. I don't think I ever got that opportunity, and that's probably because we got caught as Yuka. So, all right, uh, all right, we'll go back. <laughs> Fine, darn it, we'll go back. After all, <laughs> Yoshiki's like, excuse me, princess. <laughs> Hmm. I don't have a lot of real friends. I hate to lose the ones I do. What's that? What are you mumbling about? <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. That's any. Nothing I was hoping I could go see Miki just once more, but I guess I'll have to put that aside. Do we know who Miki is? I forgot. 
Okay, so now we are back. We don't have to worry about finding Yoshiki and everything. And we are in chapter five, and this is gonna be something else. No, don't worry, I'm not ending off the episode just yet. A lot of this episode has been a lot of chatting and stuff. I, I enjoy getting these sorts of things off off my chest to just kind of share a bit of my more personal life and everything. I'm sorry, I really am. But I wish you the best of luck. Um, but now things are gonna be a bit different. This is something I think Satoshi and the others may need. If you find them, please give it to them for me. What is this? Huh, acquired the marble statue. Uh, why don't you give it to them yourself? Because she's following them around the school right now, I can't get close enough. There's another statue like it though, a red one. If you find it, make sure he gets that one too. Understood. Okay, so there's a red one we also need. So this is already different, right? It seems like as soon as you let Yuka get caught, you're you're screwed over from the start. There's nothing you can do at that point, so. Three of us are prepared for the challenges ahead, now that our tongues have been restored. But due to our momentary awakening, the balance of these closest spaces has begun to collapse. Be very, very careful. Yeah, you don't want to get lost in an eternity of Heavenly Host Elementary School. Or worse, somewhere in between Heavenly Host and the reality. Also, remember, in order for Sachiko to feel remorse, you must appeal to her humanity, whatever's left of it. You must purify her soul. It's the only way. My mind has already come under attack. Hmm, so the next time you see me... Run. Oh man. She's gone. Yeah, for now, let's just focus on finding Satoshi. Miss Yui or Yui Sensei and the others. Though aside from Yui Sensei, the only other people we've seen so far are Suzumoto and Morishige. And we explored pretty much everywhere. Are you sure the others are even here? Well, think about it, remember? The closed spaces? Yeah, I was gonna say. That first ghost we saw told us all about them when we got here with Yui Sensei. And didn't he say that there were nine presences he sensed? Basically, anyone we can't find is probably in another version of the school. Which seemed to be collapsing and, you know, cohering into one. Which is why we never ran into them. <laughs> is there something you failed to understand? Huh? Uh, no, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> But wait a minute, if that's the case, how the heck are we supposed to tell them about the murderer? I mean, if we can't even find them. Yuki just told us how. She said the glow spaces have started breaking down. That might mean, should mean, that the connections between the dimensions are changing too. So now there's at least the possibility, is basically what Aimee's saying. So come on, let's try searching for them again. Yui Sensei and everyone else. So now we don't have to search for Yoshiki like we did in that wrong ending. And that's there's that means there's probably less of a chance that he gets consumed by the darkening. Okay, got it. <laughs> for real? <laughs> Why are you doubting him? <laughs> when I say I got it, I got it. Although. Hmm. If it's not those child spirits summoning hordes of innocent people to the school and trapping them here until they die... Then you kind of have to ask yourself, who is responsible, you know? Hmm, yeah, that's a good question. Good question indeed. Alright, so now we are both... 
Ayumi and Yoshiki. Let's head on out and let's see what we can find. Oh! <gasps> oh man, can can Yuka hide? Maybe I can hide them under here. Them? What are they? Huh? I can feel the air on my... It feels so weird. Oh! Oh! She took off her underwear! I think that's what happened. <laughs> but I can't wear them wet like that. It's gross. <laughs> oh, poor Yuka. Whoa. What is that? Oh, is this, is this like dimension closing or what? It's been nothing but earthquakes since we got here. I hope the school doesn't fall apart. Huh? Are we gonna like find out about her presence by like finding her panties or something like that? You guys know what Oni Chan means. <laughs> Are we safe? Oh no, we're not safe. Oh no, we're not safe. I see you, Satiko. We are not safe. That is for sure. Okay, so now as Ayumi, what do we do? Hmm. Hey, does anything look different to you? Very. This isn't the same school we were in before. It's a totally different heavenly host. So, it's kind of proof, if anything, or evidence supporting the hypothesis that a closed space collapsed. Yeah, and it's creepy factors through the roof, the chill in the air, the constant dark presence, it's all worse than ever. We need to find the others, and get the heck out of here. Yeah. And sometimes I think this music's a little too loud, though I do enjoy it quite a bit. Okay, so we can, um, we can take a look. What if we head up here? Are we going to run into um, good old Satoshi and Naomi? No, no, we can't do anything up there. Okay, then we will uh, we'll head downstairs. But we're gonna do that in the next episode. I know we didn't make like a ton of progress, but we did kind of get back on the right track. Um, we are now Ayumi and Yoshiki, and I'd imagine the events following here are going to be a bit different than last time. Let me know if you guys are surprised by the different like flags um, that led to this. Hopefully, what we continue to uh, lead towards a correct or true ending, rather. And let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Again, I'm really curious about the feedback as to just a lot of talking about myself, my life, what's going on. More of like a chill corpse party session. Obviously, from here on out, we're kind of going to get back into the more intense, um, back into the voice acting, back into the focusing on the story, talking about what's going on and that sort of thing. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to hear. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode. But until then, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.